Bruce and Manuel de Almeida. It's coming up on Fight Night at the Felt Forum next. An event with former WBA heavyweight champion Michael Dynamite Dokes taking on Manuel de Almeida. Dokes continuing his comeback. Michael Dokes is in his second career as a heavyweight fighter, and this one is a lot tougher than the first, the one which landed him on top of the world as champion in December 1982. This career has Michael Dokes slowly climbing his way back toward the top after cocaine and alcohol addiction knocked him out of the ring for 33 months. He began his comeback a year ago and stepped into the ring last December. He's won five fights in a row and has shown signs of recapturing the skills which earned him the nickname Dynamite. Michael Dokes has impressed a lot of people. And even the current heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson, has taken notice. In fact, Tyson called Michael Dokes just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we exchanged a few words uh, pertaining to let's get it on. And uh, uh, like I told him, I have no qualms about that at all. I'm not intimidated. I'm not... Uh, I'm not uh, 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 elated that he called me. Uh, if he didn't call me, fine. If he called me, fine. Uh, at the, that particular time, I was training. So, you know, my mind was on training, so I had to, to be very concise with the conversation. You want to fight, fine. We work out the particular with Don King, but I got to go back to work. Michael Dokes has been battling the bulge as well as his opponents in his comeback. When he first got back to training, he weighed 283. In his first fight back, he was 245. And with each fight and the continued training, the extra weight has come off. Still, it's a constant battle because of all the temptations around him. But Michael Dokes says he's seen them all. It's temptations every day uh, if you want to look at it like that. But uh, I don't see nothing that I haven't done. Uh, what, drink Chris Dale? I, I used to drink 10 bottles a night. Uh, uh, Lafitte, uh, uh, 1966. Uh, uh, blow, I used to do ounces, uh, quarter ounces. Uh, parties, I used to throw the biggest bass. Uh, the Great Gatsby didn't have parties as good as I had. Uh, uh, women, uh, I've been through them. Uh, actresses, uh, models. Uh, uh, call girls, you know, uh, uh, I, you know, it's, it's what, a Rolls Royce, uh, I had them, uh, houses, I had them, uh, uh, I, you know, it's just uh, uh, no, nothing that I haven't tapped, you know what I'm saying? The five straight wins have restored Michael Doak's confidence. He says in some ways, especially mentally, he's even better now than he once was. There's a lot of money to be made if he can get back to the top, but Michael Doak says that's not the only thing he's fighting for. I'm not fighting for money uh, this time. Uh, uh, money is fine. Uh, don't get me wrong. Let me is the money's not more not the most important thing but there's nothing more important uh don't get me wrong but but you know once you attain the money you lose your incentive you become lackadaisical uh you come become content i'm fighting for self-esteem respect now uh my integrity uh, these things last long after money uh uh, George Washington is dead, but he's on the dollar bill uh, because he had the respect and, 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 and the integrity uh, to live long after his death. And uh, these are the things that, that I'm working towards now. Uh, I just don't think I could do it for the money this time. Michael Dokes, he's had it all. He's been at the top and he's been at the bottom and now he's uh, climbing up and it's nice to see him back in there sam it's been unbelievable because just about two years ago that man was on rock bottom he was in the gutter nobody could have ever thought that he was going to be forget back in the ring again challenging for the world heavyweight championship which he will be if he keeps on this winning track well as he said respect seems to be all important to him right now people are taking notice Evander Holyfield, uh, the Lou Duva people had uh, committed to Michael Dokes in a handshake agreement that they would fight Dokes in the fall. That appears to be falling out now. They've pulled back on that agreement. There's no contract. Actually, uh, Marty Cohn, the advisor to Michael Dokes, said he has a contract signed on his part, but uh, the Duva people and the Holyfield people have not signed uh, their part of the agreement. I certainly don't want to go knocking the Holyfield people because he really looked good against James Quick Tillis. And when 
when I was talking to him two weeks ago in Lake Tahoe, they did not out, just uh, throw out a fight against Michael Dokes. They said anybody is a possibility. I think right now they're looking at somebody like Pinklin Thomas, but they said Michael Dokes certainly is a real possibility. But I think part of the reason that they might be holding back a little bit is that fear of Michael Dokes, that if he comes back to almost to where he was as heavyweight champion, he could be very, very dangerous. Michael Dokes had two of the fastest hands, not just in recent memory, but in the history of the heavyweight division. You got to take guys like Jack Johnson and Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson, of course, is way up at the top. Michael Dokes is right up there in speed, hand speed with any one of those guys. Okay, Michael Dokes and Manuel de Almeida, our main event scheduled for 10 round. It's coming up on fight night at the Felt Forum. We'll be back with it for you in just a moment. Michael Dokes and Manuel de Almeida. It's scheduled for 10. And the fighters are in the ring. This is our main event. Let's go up into the ring to Ed Darien. Standing by for the introductions. There is 90-year-old Marty Cohen, advisor to Michael Dokes. From the Big Apple, and New York City's fabulous... Sending out the roses to ringside. Let's Madison go to Ed Darien for the introductions. The world's most famous arena. Madison Square Garden Boxing. Bob Goodman, Vice President and Matchmaker, and Pat Fleming, Assistant Matchmaker, present Fight Night's main event, a scheduled 10-round heavyweight bout. The judges, Bernie Friedkin, Dr. Marvin Goldberg, and Judge Jack DeFaris. Counting for the knockdown seconds, alternate referee Carl Duke Schroeder. The timekeeper to bell is Cecilio Pedraja. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of this scheduled 10 round heavyweight bout, referee Arthur Mercanti Sr. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with the red trim. He tipped in at an even 218 pounds. This gentleman has 17 wins, six losses, two draws, with four knockouts. All the way from San Polo, Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome aboard Manuel Clay de Almeida. De Almeida. And his opponent in the red corner. He too is wearing the white trunks with the red trim. He weighed in at an even 227 pounds. This young man has 34 wins, one loss, two draws, with 21 knockouts. A native of Akron, Ohio, and now residing in Miami Beach, Florida, the former World Boxing Association heavyweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, here is Michael Dynamite Dokes. Dokes. Sixth fight in eight months for Michael Dokes. Arthur Mercanti is the referee for this main event. Michael Dokes has won his last five fights since resuming his career. Knockouts in rounds 5, 7, 10, 7, and 1. He stopped Andrew Stokes on the live card at Madison Square Garden's main arena June 27th prior to the closed circuit telecast of the Spinks-Tyson fight. Bill Slayton, the man in the corner there, his new trainer who formerly handled Ken Norton. Guided Kenny to the heavyweight championship of the world. Scheduled for 10, Manuel de Almeida. 30 years old from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and dopes quickly out and all over de Almeida. And Slayton did it with Kenny Norton. Kenny didn't even win a championship fight. the 27th of June it was down about 223 I believe it was for the fight against Stokes he's up a little in this fight to 227 but he looks very good especially if you look at pictures of him back in December when he came back December 17th 1987 against KP Porter he weighed 245 pounds and much of it was around his midsection. Now Almeida is putting some pressure on Dokes the record 
record with only four knockouts indicates a lack of punching power. But the one thing to look at with the Almeida is his hands come down when he throws his punches. A lot from the side. The right hand is coming from the side. Dokes has been exploring the midsection of De Almeida early in this first round. I like watching Dokes put those combinations together. He can still turn them loose. Dokes is a pretty quick starter. He's knocked out six men in the first round. The biggest one, of course, in December of 1982 when he stopped Mike Weaver in just over one minute for the WBA heavyweight title, one of the fastest knockouts in heavyweight history. Didn't call the fashion department. They're both in there with white trunks and red trim. That's right. Michael Dokes says he plans to take a few weeks. Plans to take a few weeks off after this fight. He's been going at a non-stop pace for about a year now. Resumed his training last August. Good combination. And he was at 283. He's knocked off 60 pounds. This is his sixth fight since resuming his pro career. And he feels he needs a little bit of time off. And he expects to get back into the ring late September. Half a minute to go in round one. Do Dale made any good because sooner or later, if he keeps doing that, Dokes is going to step in with a hook to the head. He's wide open for a counter, but right now, Dokes is taking the lead and doing it well. Late in round one. <laughs> round two scheduled for 10. Michael Dokes out quickly. The plan for the Almeida was to stick and move, and he's been doing little of either. lands the left hook. The Almeida has been stopped only once. That was in his last fight. That fight stopped on cuts. Dokes warned by Arthur McCandy to keep his punches up. You know, he had the suggestion on the fight night poll about stricter enforcement of fouls. Arthur McCandy is one of the strictest referees in the ring. He gets in there in a hurry and takes charge when he sees anything going wrong. Dokes got nabbed. He got tagged. That's just what I was going to say. That chin was right out there. Dokes has never been a defensive specialist. That's because he likes to come in and throw punches. And any man who opens himself up is vulnerable to getting hit. Sharp jab by Dokes. Dokes feels that he's a more well-rounded fighter now. He feels he can, he's changed his style and is attacking more, whereas he used to be mostly a counterpuncher. Right now he's backing off, but still not taking advantage. Look where that right hand is being thrown by De Almeida, way down from the side. Yeah, De Almeida's landed several right hands. About 30 seconds ago, he put a sharp right hand just underneath the left eye of Dokes. Mostly it's down, and Dokes should be able to take advantage of it, but he hasn't. There's a cut now on the bridge of the nose of De Almeida. De Almeida's last fight was April 13th in London, where he was stopped in the seventh round. A cut on the top of the forehead at the hairline caused the fight to be stopped. Lost to Gary Mason. Mason, a bright young talent over in England. Dale Mate is making a mistake. If he goes chasing Dokes around and tries to knock him out, because that is not his fight, Sam. If he's going to win, he's got to box all night long. Dokes not taking charge of this fight. He's landing a few shots. Good left hook. That time he took advantage of the right hand being down. End of round 
two. A special feature. Right near the end of the round, Dale made a fire to right hand, a duke step underneath, and came up with a nice counter left hand to the head. Round three, scheduled for ten. But the way this night is gone, this is just about uh, time for this one to almost be finished. Dokes with a nice combination, finished with a good straight right hand. The Almeida has never been knocked out. In the last fight was stopped on cuts, lost on a TKO. Dokes real quick, but Dokes has left himself open. Dokes' is corner yelling to him, don't pull out. I'm staying there and go after De Almeida. But Dokes has slowed down his pace. What Dokes is trying to do now is just plant his feet and launch the big right hand and sharp left hook. He wants to try to get it over with. His corner, though, they want him to launch more combinations. They don't want to see him go for that one-shot knockout. Good jabs by Dokes. Trying to plant his feet and land the right hand, and he did, but he's taking some counter left hooks from De Almeida. Good body shot. may say, the heck with that, I'll just take him out of here. Our fans want to see stricter enforcement of the rules they just saw up there from the veteran Arthur McCanny. Almeida taking a lot of punches and not doing much sticking and moving. Good combination, Stokes follows up, the Almeida covers up. through there with the uppercut. Hey, hey, this seems like a little fatigue sets in and Dokes pulls back and collects himself. Dokes figures he did it once, he could do it again. They all made a pretty easy target. Takes the right hand from Dokes. Time winding down in round three. Four, scheduled for 10. Now there's some question as to whether Arthur McCanty took the round away or just took the point away from Dokes in the scoring. Well, the scoring here in New York right now is done on a round system. So I don't see how he can take a point away. He must have taken a round away. If indeed the scoring system has changed and we go to the point system one day, then you can take a point away, but it's whatever the scoring system is on. If you look on the round system with a supplemental point system backing it up, it's, it's just really silly. This is round four. Right hand by Dokes. Dokes teeing off and snapping the jab in the face of Dale Almeida and trying to drop that right hand right on his chin. comes right back and pressures him a little bit. Good combination by Dokes. Dokes looking a little tired here. He's got his mouth open. I'm sure he's going to be looking for a second win soon because he's been throwing a lot of punches. Heavyweights normally don't throw as many shots as Michael Dokes does. Heavyweights are... Traditionally, one punch bombers. They look for a big right hand and a big left hand. The coach is not really the type of fighter who sets himself and throws that big punch. He goes with the fast hands. That time, the faster hands belong to De Almeida. Landed that left hook. We talked about fast hands before. We mentioned Jack Johnson, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson. Forgot to put in Floyd Patterson. Two of the fastest hands in the history of the division. 
blood trickling down the nose of De Almeida. Dopes continues to work with that left hand. Good right. Good straight right by Dopes. Nothing slow about those shots. And he's putting snap on the punches, too. They're not just arm punches. Not much on the punches of De Almeida, and he's backed up again by Dopes. Dokes has slowed down. He's missing more now. And after a quick, impressive start, pace is really slow. A special feature is coming your way from Domino's Pizza to ruin the noise day. And this fight has just ended. Manuel de Almeida will not answer the bell for round five. Put another victory in the column of Michael Dokes, his sixth since beginning his comeback eight months ago in December. The actual training began about a year ago, last August. And Michael Dokes has won a TKO, receives congratulations from his advisor, Marty Cohen. What a man that Marty Cohen is. 90 years young and has done a great job in helping Michael Dokes get his life straightened out. Michael Dokes, but a less than impressive win, Randy. I thought he started well. The Almeida was really not a tough opponent, couldn't hurt him was wide open, and Dokes kind of slowed down in the last two rounds. Well, one of my favorite boxing personalities, Gil Clancy, always says you can't dance with a man who just, or, or with a partner who can't dance. You can't look good. And in this case, Michael Dokes went in there and he just tried to dance with his opponent who just didn't dance back, wasn't that good an opponent, was just there, was really an opponent. That's all he was. Yeah. He tried, he used that long left, but he had nothing else to offer, and Michael Dokes really just couldn't rise to the occasion and fought just a little bit above that. If the opponent had fought back a little bit more, you would have seen more from Michael. Let's get the official announcement from ring announcer Ed Darian. Ladies and gentlemen, Principal Manuel Clay de Almeida unable to continue. Therefore, referee Arthur Mercanti Sr. stops this bout at the end of the fourth round. And the winner by a TKO, Michael Dynamite Dokes. Dokes. And how about a nice round of applause for Manuel Clay de Almeida. Let's so hear Michael it. Dokes continues the comeback as he wins his 35th fight 35 1 and 2 his sixth in a row on his comeback and now plans to take a little time off we'll see him again late september michael dokes a winner over manuel de almeida and we'll be back to talk with the winner former heavyweight champion michael dokes in just a moment oh. 